Okay, let's see. How much do these data man programmers cost? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, let's talk about this. My name's Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and some of my students and I have been working on a project I call Retcom 87, a retro-inspired computer based on technology available in 1987 and earlier, built upon a development board by Western Design Center. I've recently developed an interest in programmable logic for retro computing applications. But with my retro focus, I want to avoid FPGAs. So I'm thinking about GALs, PALs, PLDs, PLAs, whatever you want to call them. I figure things like the 22V10 and the 16V8 are fair game. They're available in DIP packages, and they were around in the 80s. I remember programming chips like this using Palisim when I took my senior digital design lab at Washington University in St. Louis, and I went to school in the dark ages. For this retro project, I would also like to avoid high-level hardware description languages like VHDL and Verilog. So I'm thinking about one couple, or however you were supposed to pronounce it. I discovered a chip called the ATF750, which is supposed to be a fancier version of the 22V10, and it looks like those are available for a reasonable price. But then I discovered the ATF2500 a complex programmable logic device, aka CPLD, that gloriously is available in a 40-pin DIP package. Okay, so this particular device wasn't available in 1987, but I think having a 40-pin package fits the retro theme so well that I'll allow it. And yes, yes, I know people make little 40-pin PCBs with CPLDs on them. But a lot of these newer CPLDs are 3.3 volt only chips, and I really want something that's 5 volt compliant, which the 2500 is. And I'd really like something that's natively in a 40 pin dip package. I have an emotional attachment to 40 pin dip packages. Yeah, I should probably get out more. Anyway, they are available at Mouser for around 10 bucks. But I would need a way to program them. And it looks like a lot of programmers don't know how to handle them. And even Atmel's own website is very vague about what you can use. The least expensive programmer on the Dataman website, the Dataman 40 Pro, listed at $595, can handle the 22V10s and those 750s, but not the 2500s. Strangely, if we go up in price to $895, we get the Dataman S6, which seems to not even be able to handle the 750s, let alone the 2500. It looks like if you want to program the 2500, you have to move up to the Dataman 48 Pro 2C, which is a whopping $995. You can also drop the C and get a fancier unit for $1,195 or splurge $1,295 on the UXP version. Are we doomed? Maybe not. For $199, you can get an Xgeku, Xgisu, not sure how to pronounce that. Let's say Xgeku. If you know a better way to pronounce that, let me know. Anyway, they have a T56 Universal Programmer, and indeed, it claims the 2500 in its list of supported devices. The same company makes some cheaper programmers, but they don't seem to support the 2500. Have you used an Xkaku programmer? Have you followed this rather dodgy looking link to download the software? Have you used the 2500? If so, leave a comment below.